Planning Commission meeting. And um, the first order of business will be to consider approval of the Planning Commission minutes from the December 10th meeting. I entertain a motion for approval. So mm -hmm. moved. Second. And a second by Seltzer. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed, that carries. Thank you very much. And then we have council representative report. Holy person Bartlett, did you have anything tonight? Uh, not much, you'll see in the status developments, we're talking about opening, the, well, work starting, breaking ground on the new hotel, I think April now, they asked for a, uh, that they just extend their permit out there, so they'll be breaking ground on that. So that already came through, but Kettle Park West are talking about more housing, so if they if that moves forward, still a lot of negotiations going on, and exactly what they're going to do, but maybe seeing that in the upcoming year, so you know, but other than that, uh, they approved the, uh, the council approved the extraterritorial jurisdictional recommendations you made last council meeting, here, last planning commission meeting. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. And it takes us to staff reports, and uh, Michael will be doing that tonight. Yeah, in your packet, as usual, the uh, status of developments is listed. If you have any questions, I can certainly try to answer them for you. Any questions from any of the commissioners? Hearing none, it takes us to item number five, which is a request by Mackenzie Gervasi for a conditional use permit to allow a group daycare and preschool at 1940 Jackson Street. Do you want to kind of fill us in, or should we just go into the public hearing? And yeah, I just say that uh, that the applicant called me late last week and uh, said uh, she wanted it moved, removed from the agenda. So um, the public hearing still has to go on, and after that, we'll just we'll close that item. So what we'll do is we'll close our regular meeting and then reopen for the public hearing. Is there anybody here to speak on that issue? Okay, seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and then reopen the regular meeting. And then uh, I guess we don't really, do we take action or would we? I don't think so. Okay. I, I, Just a quick question, is she abandoning the project? She didn't say. She okay, just so, wanted yeah. so, so at this point, we don't really have a recommendation that we can give the council. So okay. I guess we can just let it. Uh, do we need to table it until they come back? Give her if they do. Or we can do that. that. That's that's an option if you'd like. A motion to table. To uh, tell what uh, till they request to put it back on the agenda again. Okay. Second. All right. Any discussion? Actually, you can't table, uh, discuss the table, can you? No. Or, okay. So then we'll go ahead and take a vote. All in favor of the, uh, all those approving uh, the table, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. All right. And then the next item would be uh, number six, and that would be the proposed ordinance amendment to section 78-206, parent E, parent Y, keeping the chickens. Do you have a, any overview on this one before we open up the public hearing? Yeah, I think you, you guys knew this was coming back. Um, you, I think you requested it. So it's coming back to change the, uh, the number of hens from four to six. And the uh, requester is in the audience if you had any questions. Do you want to start conversation, or would you rather go into public hearing first? I'll just, if I could. Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we have item six and item seven. Item six is uh, referring is is ordinance uh, zoning ordinance change. Uh, item seven is an ordinance change. Uh, it's it to me it seems to be redundant. What I would like to do is to uh, move on the uh, zoning ordinance which is the 78-206 parent, parent 8, parent Y, and uh, remove and abandon the uh, keeping of animals, uh, which is item seven. Uh, that's 6-2, parent B, because of the redundancy. So that's a motion? Uh, or you want to I talk think, about I think first? what I'll do is I'll just save the motion to <coughs> when we get to item seven to remove okay. it. Okay. And is there a reason why we have two of them, or that's just? 
not sure why hens was ever added to keeping of animals, but it can certainly be removed when we get there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments before we go into the public hearing? All right. Seeing none, we'll close our regular meeting and we'll reopen for public hearing. And there's some people here. Did you want to speak to this topic? Sure. If you could just come up to the podium here. It looks like we have your information, so thank you. You can introduce yourself for the record. Hello, my name is Elizabeth Whitener. I've lived in Stoughton for 16, almost 17 years. Um, we got chickens the first time, the first year that you allowed them. We have, my family has a ton of allergies, so we can't have cats and dogs, so we have chickens. I also have a child with a rare, like he's the only one in the world, metabolic disorder. And so we started um, gardening at the city garden and doing our own chickens because the more organic the better and the stuff that we buy at the grocery store he really gets sick from um, and we've had four chickens uh, we're on our like third batch we get Rhode Island red chickens and Rhode Island red chickens they grow really big and fast and they're lovely but really when they get about four years old they get their eggs get so big that they kind of get egg bound. And so I've had a couple, a couple die because they've gotten egg bound. I've had my dad come and take them and off them so we can get new groups. But it's hard, the, the number of four is hard because really the least you can get from a hatchery is three. And that whole chicken or the order of the chickens, that kind of is a real thing. So you can't just like get another chick to fill in a spot. So I have five people in my family, three teenagers, one that's a sick one that needs to eat our food for the most part. And this last fall, one of my chickens that are prime, right in lay, egg laying range, got his be beheaded by a hawk. So now I'm down to three and they're molting. So now I'm only getting about one or two eggs a day. So he gets those eggs. We've been buying other eggs from the grocery store. We have a coop, which when you look at the coops of the people around Stoughton, sorry, my color picture wouldn't work. My coop is built for 12. We'll never have 12. But we, it would be nice to be able to have six because right now I'm at three, which means the next spring I can get three more. And at least then I'm getting, on average, about as many eggs as people in my family. We travel a lot to Europe, and when we travel, my neighbors fight over who gets to take care of my chickens. Because when you take care of chickens, you get the eggs. So we give a lot of eggs to the neighbors, and they come over and look at the chickens and collect the eggs and go home. So they're really, they're really wonderful. So that's all I had okay. to say. Thank you. Thanks. And is anybody else here to speak, speak on this issue tonight? All right. Um, did you want to speak on it or do you want me to close and then we go into deliberation? That'd be fine. Okay, so we'll close the public hearing and reopen for our regular business and all the, um, Commissioner Seltzer. Um, thank you. I'd, I'd just like to say, you know, I did read all that over and tried to figure it all out. And it makes a lot of sense, and I can't see that anybody's being hurt by it. Um, especially the buying and selling when something happens to one of the chickens. So mm -hmm. I don't really see any reason to question it, nor unless somebody says there's been a lot of complaints about chickens. I think. Um, this is a very good proposal, and we should just go ahead with it. Should I make a motion on that? I move to do so. I'll second that. Okay. So there's a motion and a second. Any more discussion on this one? Other person, Bartlett. Yes, I did have, ask the chief about it just to see, because I hadn't heard any complaints, and he said there have been no issues to date, so there's no reason I see not to allow it. But so that's all I have. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions or comments? I guess the only question I had, Michael, was, I mean, you, you have to go out and inspect. Yep. Do you anticipate having more chickens would change anybody else's chicken coop, or are they all big enough to? Um, no, it's, um, that's fine. Yeah, I, we have very few prob problems with, with these issues out there, so. Okay, I don't see any issues. All right, anybody else have anything? All right, so all in favor of the motion, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None opposed, that carries. So what happens then is it goes to the city council and we'll
trying to get something on, could be on next Tuesday already, and usually we have two readings. The first reading on an ordinance is basically to introduce it, and then that way if there's any additional research that needs to be done or information um, that the council would like, they can come back for the next meeting and actually take action. They could waive the rules, typically doesn't happen, but it could happen where they could actually take action the same night. So thank you for coming out. And then the next item on here is um, the proposed ordinance amendment to section 6-2, parent B, of keeping of animals. And Alder Person Jensen, did you want to speak to this one? Yeah, it just, uh, it's, it's the exact same verbiage as, as the ordinance we just passed, and it, it just seems to be redundant to have it in two separate places where it's really not necessary. So um, <coughs> my motion would be to remove this from consideration. Okay. Let's remove the first two sentences in that paragraph. Remove the first two sentences in there. For so, for so, well, let me go to it so I know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, so where it says uh, citizens request increase uh, number of chickens. Basically, <coughs> we would remove all of section uh, 6 2 parent B. Okay, and that's a motion. That would be my motion. Okay, so your second. Some of it's related to rabbits. That's yeah, right. it's I, not I, the whole section. It's I only guess. <coughs> can I ask a question? Sure, absolutely. When I when I look at it, it seems like section six two is more inclusive of all animals, birds, and bees, and while the chicken portion is redundant, yep. if we strike the whole paragraph, then we lose all the reference to rabbits, dogs, and other. Yeah, my um, I, I stand corrected because I'm looking at this, and now when you, if you go down and look at the actual. So just here. yes, I agree. So, so I'm, I'm wondering if, just because I know how people use ordinances, they sometimes will go based on how they search. They may start in here, and if there is no reference to chickens at all, they may wonder why isn't it covered. It, it, maybe rather <coughs> to avoid redundancy, maybe we just say for chicken C, and then reference the other part of the code, so it's dealt with all in the same place. Yes. That'd be fine with me. Good I, it's just, yeah. I, I just think that the. We don't really need yeah, verbiage. Yeah, I, I think places. the verbiage in both places makes sense. I just, I know someone may look here first and say, well, isn't a chicken an animal or a bird and shouldn't it be covered? So um, if we okay. could at least just say for chickens, which there's a lot more detail in the in the other section, just make some sort of reference to see this other part of the order. section, yeah. So do you, yeah. you want to just change your motion then? Or? Yeah, what I what I do then is, is uh, the first two sentences would be eliminated. It would be redlined. And then at the end of the paragraph, you could put in parentheses for chicken C, 78-206, parent A, parent Y. Does that sound good? Is there a second then? I'll second it. OK. Any questions or comments on that? Uh, here none. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. Okay, so this is a, this is still an ordinance change because we're changing the verbiage in there. So this would still come to council and. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And if, if we get the language, the holly, we can talk to. Oh yeah. Have our meeting with Matt on Thursday. So at one o'clock, if you get it to her by then, we should be able to get on for She'll next have it week. tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Um, item number eight is a proposed ordinance amendment to 78-916 parent 2 parent O zoning administrator and that one there Michael is yeah it's at the end of that ordinance yeah I don't know why this was ever put in there but really that's what a variance is for that's why people go to the Board of Appeals when they want minor adjustments to to zoning regulations, um, so we we just like to remove it. So I've I've never granted anybody minor dimensional modifications to anything. So okay. So so as staff, as staff, as staff, as staff, you'd prefer not to have this in there. Right. Yeah. Okay. So then, yeah. That's, then what, I'll, that's I'll, what the variance procedure is for. So we have a public Start hearing a public on this hearing one too. On so. Um, any more comments? Otherwise, we'll go into public hearing. 
and we'll reopen or we're closed for public hearing we'll reopen for the public hearing nobody's here to speak on it so we'll go back into our regular meeting then and, and did you want to make a motion or you want to have a discussion on this one well I'll, I'll move to strike paragraph o from um, section 78-916 parent 2 parent o Second. Right. Second. Bart. Right. Any more discussion on this one? Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None opposed. That one carries. And we'll keep going <coughs> right down the list. I mean, we're just trying to pick off the low hanging fruit. And, we're, you know, at the next couple meetings, there'll be more, but they'll probably be a little bit more complicated. Uh, number nine is um, proposed ordinance amendment to section. 78-518 residential historic design overlay zoning district that's a mouthful yeah yeah this is kind of an unusual section in the code we're not really sure why it's in there because there, there really are no regulations it references and you know a document that's that was made in the 90s um, that's really more of a recommendation than it is a requirement and I, I took it to Landmarks Commission, and they were they were fine with eliminating it. Or if if you decided you wanted to try to modify it, um, they would assist in that we, endeavor. We've been but, there and done that. I don't think we but, want to go down there again. I don't I don't <laughs> know why we need it. Okay. So this one here will will close the regular meeting, reopen an open public hearing. There's nobody here, so we'll go through this routine again. And we'll reopen our regular meeting. Any discussion on this one? Uh, just one question. So this is the full, <coughs> what, we're, what we see here in our packet, this is the full extent of that section. Yeah. OK. Um, well, given that that's the full extent of the section, and I agree with you, it, it doesn't seem to have a purpose. Um, I would move to um, eliminate section 78-518 from the code. I'll second. Second by Jensen. Any further discussion? Person, yes. Michael, have you looked at it? Does anywhere else in the code reference this code? Um, no. Okay. No. I looked for that document, too, and I couldn't find that I document. I was looking around, it, and, you know, I even checked through the comp plan to see you know, how it's referenced there, and it, there really isn't anything specific, and there are no requirements. So it's really just <coughs> wasted space. <coughs> okay, thanks. All right, so the motion is second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor of eliminating this, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That carries. Item number 10, proposed amendment to the planning and development fee schedule. <coughs> this one's probably going to be a little more complicated, but not too bad. What do you have? Yeah, it was on the agenda last time, and I think there just wasn't very many... Uh, commissioners here so yeah it's just uh, I don't know if it came through for you guys you got it in red where you can see what the changes are I'm not in, I didn't print it in red but anything oh, underlined is yeah a change as well yeah there should be some stricken stuff so there's just just a few changes uh, one was uh, was when somebody requests a, uh, a zoning letter um, we, that, that's something that's new, so that would be $50 for that request. Um, and then the, the Downtown Design Overlay Zoning District, now that we have new requirements, uh, we have no fee until now. We want to add that fee in here. And then there was just a couple other minor changes where we haven't been uh, getting, a, getting enough money for the time we spent on it. If you have any questions, I can... So it looks like most of these require some staff time. And I think the idea, you know, that we're looking at is if, if we have to, you know, spend an hour, uh, whether it's um, doing something with a, a structure or even at some point we might be talking about, you know, licensees and, and, and inspecting chicken coops or something like that. I was um, looking to see if chickens were in here, but I didn't see <laughs> Not so far. <laughs> Uh, I think that might come from the <laughs> clerk's department. All under a license, yeah. It goes through the clerk's office, and then 
I actually do an inspection and then it goes back to the clerk's <coughs> office. Okay. Yeah, so it's approved. And I know the clerk's reviewing some stuff as well because we just, you know, some of the fees are dated and and we want to be able to provide the service and have the, the staff to do so. Go ahead. Um, <coughs> it seems like, and I think you might have said this, that the places that you targeted for increase are where you're seeing time in yeah. excess of what you've kind of really been yeah. receiving fees for. Is that correct? Correct, yeah. It, I just thought, I don't know if we've had a chance to do this. Are these fees, I mean, they seem reasonable. Are they comparable to other communities in terms of what developers are going to be expecting when they come in? That yeah, yeah. Okay. We've we've checked comparables in the past, and okay. I think we're right in line. With All right, even with others. the increases? Yeah. Okay. We're kind of middle of the pack. Huh. Yeah, the online version has all the red lines, so it's a little easier um, to see that. Zoning letters, I'm not really sure what, it's just some somebody will request a zoning letter, to, so they'll they'll want to know like what the zoning is. They want to know all the information about a property, you know, past permits, and and they all they want it all spelled out in a in a letter. And that stuff's so on our website, isn't it? Or no. No. So they have to request it. So if there's any zoning violations and things like that, they want to know about it in a letter. Mm. Okay. And then the other one you mentioned the downtown design overlay zoning reviews. Yep. And the other one was for structural project or demolition request. So a lot of this has to do with the demolition. Yep. Did somebody have their hand up? Go ahead. And uh, a couple things. Item, let's see, number six, the raisings, demolitions, and moving structures. You have $75 minimum, but isn't it just straight $75? 75, yeah. Do we strike that minimum? What is that? Oh, okay, there. Uh, number six. Oh. Nine. Yeah, I wonder why that's minimum. Yeah, that doesn't need to be minimum. Oh, six. Yeah, that could be stricken. And I had a, that erosion control. How did it get? Uh, how did it get to be thousands of cents? <coughs> Eight thousandths. That's per square foot. Is that that uh, mimics the Dane County? Okay. That's that's how they they charge it. So we, since we contract with them, we try to at least get recoup some costs so that's that's where that came from the county county's fees okay thanks any other questions on this one otherwise uh, anybody I uh, entertain a motion motion to approve I make a recommendation for approval to the council okay is there a second second uh, Jensen okay any more discussion on this one? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed? That carries. Number 11 is a proposed ordinance amendment to section 10 34, parent B, electrical contractor license. Go ahead, Michael. Yeah, this is uh, due to st state law changes years ago. Uh, we stopped uh, licensing electrical contractors in the city. So we haven't used this for years. So it doesn't make sense to leave it in the code. Because they're licensed by We the used state to have a now. local, actually a local license besides the, the state, state license. Okay. So we would, yeah, we would charge them a fee every year. Uh, it's just a cumbersome thing to try to charge these guys fee, you know, duplicate fees. Anyway, so we're, we just like to remove it. Are there... I suppose I should make sure I can ask a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, are there any other contractors that are charged a local license? I mean, a HVAC or anything like that. Nope. So this was kind of a unique. As this it was, was unique to electrical, yeah, because they had they had a separate uh, committee. I think that that yeah, they had a board of electrical examiners also with the city that that. Uh, Do we still have that? Because that uh, shows up yeah. like on our website or somewhere when I was going through yeah, our committees. Still on some I documents. We should scrub. Yeah. Huh? It's still on some documents we should scrub. But that, yeah. that was eliminated. That was eliminated. Okay, when this was we'll changed. let Holly know that. Yeah. If you want to let her know okay. that, yeah. she'll take that off of there. There was a couple others that I found that, you know, like the Friends of Mant Park and some yeah. other ones that haven't right. been in existence for years. So, right. Um, right. So, yeah. I'm all for less committee meetings. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's pretty other. When you got to go to them all. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get to most of them. 
Uh, any other questions or comments on this one? Otherwise, I guess we'll entertain a motion. Motion to recommend approval to council. All right. And, and the uh, recommendation is just to eliminate this. Is that what we're doing? Yes. Amend right. the ordinance to eliminate. As presented. B, okay. C. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Any more discussion? This is fun stuff, isn't it? No controversy. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? None opposed. That one carries as well. Uh, future agenda items. Does anybody have something? Go ahead, Greg. I'd like to see the bees come forward as soon as possible. Any word on that, Mike, with uh, the attorney? He didn't. Uh, the bees ordinance. The I bees forwarded right. the email that was floating around today. He's making, he's getting caught up on a lot of the big issues that we had. Okay. Obviously, Chapter 78 was a big one that we completed, yep. and 34. Um, he worked on the social media one that was pretty time consuming. The bank transition, uh, you know, do, to acquire the bank took a lot of time. So that one is completed now, and the lease that went with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then he's been working on some RDA stuff as well. Uh, so he's been pretty busy, and I know he's working with uh, Brett on two things with Public Works, um, and he's just about complete with them as well. So I think that we're getting dangerously close to having a uh, discussion on this item. Okay, yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to see it done as soon as possible because it's been probably, well, it's well over a year. Probably yeah, it has now. been, and he'll be the first one to acknowledge that. And it was just a question of priorities, and yep. and but now I think we're getting to the point unless something else comes up where he should be able to take a stab at this one. Um, is there, is it, was there an ordinance that we were going to use floating around? It was, I believe it was actually, uh, uh, Matt had one, I think. Six, that he six two. He did? Six dash two. Okay. I think it was in there. <laughs> All right. So I'll follow up with him. I'll be, like I mentioned earlier, we'll have a conference call on Thursday afternoon and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see if he has a timetable for that, so we can communicate that to this group and uh, and those that you know wish to have the conversation. So we would probably have to have a public hearing on that and get it posted anyway, wouldn't we? I don't think a public hearing is required on that ordinance. It's not. It'd be a new ordinance or an existing. You just an, an amendment to Chapter Six. Okay. What is the distinction? Think, unless, unless Matt wants to put it in the zoning code, I don't know which direction he's going yet. Okay. We'll have to talk to Matt. All right. So, anything else? Any other future agenda items? And you'll probably see that we'll have some more of these ordinances. Um, there were some changes in state law that may require us to change some of our zoning codes as well and some of the ways that we report some things. And we're trying to work with, uh, we, we're members of the Wisconsin uh, Cities and Villages and with the leagues of municipalities. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to work with them so we don't have to reinvent the wheel on all this stuff. Although some of the specifics might be, you know, unique for Stoughton, but generally a lot of communities are going to be going through some of these same law changes as we were. And I know it was at one seminar where we had two different attorneys there and high paid attorneys at that. And um, they didn't even agree on the language that was in the state laws that had changed and what that really meant. So there's, uh, I'm not really sure, sure. Some of the stuff is clear as mud on exactly, I think we kind of know the intent, but sometimes the language doesn't, isn't consistent with that. And I know there's already some efforts to repeal some of it. So, you know, I'm not really sure how that's going to go. Some of it's on conditional use permits, which we talked about previously. And then, like I said, there's some on some of the re reporting requirements. So I know Rodney, you guys went to the seminars on those as well. So definitely got some things, things coming we're going to have to do by, I think, 2020. Yeah. yeah. So what we're trying to do is, is chip away at some of this other stuff because we know as soon as the weather warms up again, we'll be getting a lot of requests for, for some work. At least we hope, we're hoping that we are. 
Um, I would expect that uh, KPW will be coming back with phase two. Um, that was brought here and then uh, they went to Park and Rec. Park and Rec uh, requested that they move the location of the park. Um, so there's a conceptual drawing going on around right now and Park and Rec are going to take a look at that tomorrow night. And then if they get their blessing, I would expect them to bring their updated conceptual plan here. Right now it's basically kind of a hand-drawn thing and they want to make sure that everybody's good with it before they invest a lot of money and, and redo that. So um, I think it's encouraging that, you know, they're, they're listening to the feedback they're receiving from us and Park and Rec and hopefully we'll get something back here in the next, hopefully next month. So that's the only other one that I can think of off yep. the top of my head. We haven't heard from Tillerson. We'll yeah. have the Tillerson request. Tillerson request will be coming. coming. I know that Downtown. some of the other plans that were approved, the hotel we mentioned, uh, the, the RDA is trying to resurrect the, uh, the marathon site proposal, but I don't know if there will be any changes in that. I haven't seen anything. Yeah. So I don't know if we'll see anything that will have to come through here or not on that one, but kind of gives you a flavor that some of the developers are already, you know, getting, making plans for the spring. So hopefully it'll be a busy year. Mike, is, is, uh, has anything come forward as far as plans or, or what, what they're planning to do with the old D&M station? Oh, I haven't seen a thing. Okay. No, I've seen he had an auction. Yeah, well, I was, yeah. Luckily, everything's gone. So. Yeah. Paper said an auto repair store or something, right? <coughs> yeah, it's not the paper, the hub reported. He's going to have a. They uh, just buried the tanks. They didn't well, sell cars off. there. I know that. They didn't sell cars. They just pulled the tanks. Repair, cars, right? Did they pull the tanks? Yeah, off? they pulled the tanks. <coughs> okay. Tanks are gone. The canopy's gone. He's going to have a, a future public hearing, conditional use, coming here. I imagine within a month or two. So. So yes, for all Yep. So that's all we have. Uh, looking for a motion to adjourn. to adjourn. Second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Unopposed. And the paper, he said the tanks are out of here. Just to be safe. Yeah, I, I noticed it. Well,